Aloha everyone, this is Ian from Hyper. Uh, today we're back in Kona. This is our full range of paddles, the 9.25 disciplinarian, the sprint blade that's 7.75 inches, and the smaller sprint blade at 7.1 inches. So many of you already have the disciplinarian. You probably have the this version, right? Now, let me put it in series. Why do we have this? Now, if you think about how teardrop shapes are, most of the volume, if you bury your blade half deep, 65 to 70% of the surface area of the blade is already in the water. So you know, it's just physics. The more surface area of the blade in the water, the more water you catch, right? In the square version, it's what I call the deep blade, because 50 in means 50% of the surface area, all right? However, it's much narrower. So how it behaves in the water is very different. This will catch a lot more, you, it will hold a lot more water faster. This is why it's called a sprint blade. You cannot use this without having the discipline of knowing how to catch with this first. That's why when I designed this series of blades, it was done as a trifecta. It's basically, if you look at it, if you just look at the blade differences, it's increasing levels of discipline required because it's easier and easier to get these blades through the water. So my concept was always to have the discipline to maintain the catch before you rip it through the water. Now, today, this, this is Jeff Mulder, uh, our typical mainland paddler. Uh, he also happens to be my Canadian distributor for paddle boards. And we like to have all our distributors train on everything. So, as he found out today, the bigger blade, he can paddle at how many strokes a minute? 48. 49. 48 strokes a minute, right? I was using the sprint blade. To stay with him, I had to paddle a minimum about 52 to 53. It doesn't sound like a lot of difference. It's five, six strokes more per minute. Added up over the hour, I had to paddle, well, a couple thousand extra strokes, right? Now, it doesn't matter. It depends what kind of conditions you are using it for, right? Now, if you have the discipline, and I maintain it, if you have the discipline and you like to paddle at a lower heart rate, right? Having a bigger blade to catch more water per stroke to get more travel, it's actually, uh, you know, Desired for guys our age, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How Less old are you? heart rate. How old are you? 62. Oh, shit, he's 62. I'm 58. I thought I was old, but <laughs> he's worse. <laughs> so we ain't getting younger. So for me, as I get older, I like to go just as fast with less strokes. So technically, when I'm training, I actually like to use this one. Because this one has a little bit of swing weight to it. I feel like I'm sw swinging a Viking sword. Yeah. I mean, okay, he's Viking, but not me. He's, <laughs> he's a Norwegian. So, so as far as I'm concerned, you have a lot more. Uh, I would like to train 90% of my time on this because on race day, I will use this one, all this. However, 80% at practice is not the same on race day, right? As I was telling Jeff, what did I tell you? Yeah, 80%. <clears throat> Come is, louder. Okay, well, if you're using this for training, um, and then switch to this, this is going to feel, I mean, if you maintain the same effort, you're probably going to be paddling, I don't know, 100%. You need to really back it off on this. It'll feel, it'll feel probably like 60% right. um, using this lighter paddle on a race day, but using the same speed, probably, I'm guessing. Um, so I've yet you, to they, use it on a race day. You guys might not have heard him. What he was trying to say is um, the perception of effort is not the right. same as yeah. the actual expenditure effort because if you're training most of your time with a heavy blade and when you go fight with this this is going to feel magical right same with this so you have to have the discipline on race day to go at 60 percent when you start because who cares how you start is how you finish that matter and that's why when we talk about you know uh moving between the blades right it's like these are heaviest biggest low volume lighter lighter, lighter, smaller, smaller. So as you go smaller, you you got to have the uh, discipline to still have the same catch 
you can rev it higher, especially on downwinders where you're running with the bump, you really don't need as much torque per stroke. That's when you use this. That's why I call it a sprint bed. As yeah. you said, the entry in the water, how would yeah, it? Yeah, coming back. Louder. Uh... Coming back today, this uh, I wasn't using this blade, I was using this blade. Yeah. And there was a few strokes, or a few bumps that we were trying to catch, and Ian was hammering on this one a little bit quicker, a little, getting on the bump better. This one, I I needed to go faster, and I think yeah. this one would have been an advantage today in the conditions coming right. back, downwind anyway. Yeah. Going upwind, no problem with yeah. either one of them. But this one, the entry on this is unbelievable. When you put it in the water, it doesn't even feel like it's, you can't even tell when it enters. It's just, boom, it's in the water, it slips in just like a... Yeah. It's like, like a razor, you can put it in the, in the water razor, you can barely feel the water ent enter. That's why I'm saying you have to have some discipline. Because right, you can it, blow up with this. Yeah, you, you, you can, can just blow up. go crazy and pedal at 75 strokes a minute and it will cavitate out a heck out of it. That's why I always say, train on this, race on this, because this requires a lot more discipline in your control. Control of speed and hastiness. This requires patience. So once you have patience, you can oh, for sure. You can sprint, yeah. right? The problem is most people start with paddles like this. No patience, just hating, rip the hell out of the water and get nowhere. So I hope that helps. Thank you.